Magic Johnson on Kimmel later tonight. Right now on 13 Action News Live at 11, heart-stopping moments as a crook shoves a gun in a man's face and demands money. New tonight. Your animals should be safe in your own yard. Families outraged after they say someone is trying to take out their pets. Shocking new details coming in after the death of a teenager rocks the valley. Right now, Paul Jones and his wife, Latoya Williams-Miley, are behind bars accused of killing Aaron Jones. Police say the 13-year-old's father now admits to killing his son and dumping his body in a dirt lot. But the family of Aaron's stepmom says she's innocent. 13 Action News anchor Christopher King is live at the Clark County Detention Center tonight with more. Christopher. Trisha, Steve, this is the arrest report. It says Paul Jones confessed he beat his son, then dumped his body. And now he and his wife, Latoya Miley Williams, are right here at the Clark County Jail. Her cousin says that does not sound like the woman she knows. I know for sure Toya did not do anything to him at all. She doesn't want to reveal her name or show her face, but she does insist her cousin Latoya Williams Miley would not kill her stepson, Aaron Jones. She loved him like her own kids. The coroner today confirming a body found in this dirt lot along Boulder Highway near US 95 is Aaron's. I'm just shocked that this is even happening right now. According to this arrest report, the boy's father, Paul Jones, confessed to the crime. Police also arresting his wife, this woman's cousin. She can barely kill a fly or a bug, so for her to put her hands on each other or anything is unbelievable. According to the report, Jones would punish Aaron in ways that approach torture. Would LaToya take part in the punishments that police say that Paul meted out to his son? No, absolutely not. Then one day last winter, the report says Jones admitted he hit Aaron, knocking his son to the ground. When the boy didn't wake up, the report says Jones wrapped up Aaron in a blanket and dumped his body in the dirt lot. The kids would sometimes come out and the father would yell at them like aggressively. The Jones family used to live across the street from Yuri Ortega in East Las Vegas. She tells us there were warning signs. So I did, you know, think some of the kids would be hurt or something, but not like that. But this woman defends her cousin. Did LaToya kill Aaron? No. And that cousin tells us she never saw any sign of trouble. She said the family seemed to get along, but the arrest report tells a different story. We're live. Christopher King, 13 Action News. Christopher, thank you. New tonight, this kilt-wearing hero you see right here who stopped a man who was threatening to kill a mother and daughter is now asking for help of his own. Earlier this month, Mike Withy Combe, a former offensive lineman in the NFL, was injured when he tackled the lurker. His legs and feet were torn up, and he's still not back to work. When we talked to him after the incident, he said he would do it all over again if he had to. I'll be damned if I'm going to stand by and let a single mother lose her daughter to a predator. A GoFundMe account has been set up to help Mike while he's out of work. We have a link to that on our website. Just go to KTNV.com. Some pet owners in a Pahrump community are on edge tonight after several dogs in the same HOA jurisdiction were poisoned this week. And tonight we've learned that one has died. 13 Action News reporter David Schumann has the latest on what's been happening. These were happier days when the Buckley family had Princess, loved her, and she loved them back. Very playful, you know, she's one of those ones that as long as you're petting her and touching her, like, love me. Tuesday, it all changed. It was a totally different dog. Her mind was still there, like, but she couldn't, every time she would get up, she would stumble. Doctors said it was poison. Princess died Thursday. I'm doing good. It's just hard. It really is hard. The Buckleys weren't the only ones going through this. In the Comstock Park HOA in Pahrump, seven people called the office this week reporting their dogs were sick. Homestead Animal Hospital took three of them in. The same dog food was, you know, all over the place. Um, so I think this is like deliberately somebody's doing it, poisoning. Sabrina Buckley found strange meat in her yard. Sadly, her other dog, Tink, a service dog, fell ill as well and is currently in a battle for her life. I'm numb because we've been without sleep for like three days and, you know, we completely broke down when, when we found out we lost the first one. In late 2015, we covered another story in the same HOA. At least four dogs died then of poisoning. Now, this community is reliving a similar nightmare. 
Toxicology reports have been sent out to a lab. The results are expected back in about a week. In the meantime, the hospital is welcoming donations to help pay for Princess's cremation and urn, as well as to create something like this, something to remember her by. In Pahrump, David Schumann, 13 Action News. This just in, the California Highway Patrol has an armed suspect in custody after this blistering high-speed chase across Orange County, at one point reaching speeds more than 115 miles an hour. They say the pursuit began after reports of the suspect firing shots at an unoccupied vehicle. CHP took over the chase when the gunman moved up onto the freeway. New tonight, the county announced the owners of Fountain Blue, Las Vegas, have submitted plans to wrap exposed lower portions of its building. This rendering is what it's expected to look like when it's done. The resort was left incomplete after the original owner filed for bankruptcy. It's estimated it would cost more than a billion dollars to finish. An update tonight on the man accused of using several toasters to set towels on fire inside Trump International Hotel. According to an arrest report, Roger Fraley told police that he stole the toasters from a hotel closet and set two fires because he was bored. Fraley also told police he'd been wandering around all day and night and he hadn't slept. He's being charged with arson. Only on 13 Action News, a valley man is trying to track down whoever pulled him out of a burning car, giving him a second chance at life. Henry Clay was driving home Tuesday night near US 95 in Durango when this accident happened. Here you can see just how smashed up his car was. Clay was trapped inside when the car caught fire. A good Samaritan stopped to pull him to safety. Clay says the next thing he remembers is waking up in the hospital. I don't know what my purpose is for being here, but I guess I'm not done yet. <laughs> As for the good Samaritan, Clay doesn't know if the person was also involved in the crash or just driving by. What he does know is he wants to find them to say thank you. No words can describe how blessed we feel because of this person, and that's it. We just want to say thank you. Clay says he's humbled by the whole experience. A whistleblower at a local charter school contacted 13 Action News claiming some of the teachers aren't licensed for what they're teaching. When you ask, we investigate. We're told that three full-time teachers at Pinecrest Academy's Horizon Campus only have substitute licenses, and three others have licenses for a different grade level or subject. What would you say if I told you that one of their kindergarten teachers isn't licensed to teach kindergarten? I would say that's probably something they should have told the parents. She probably only... shouldn't be allowed to teach. The school's principal told us the teacher shortage and staff changes forced her to hire teachers with only a substitute license. Education officials say that's legal unless a sub is in a classroom more than 20 days and then parents must be informed. As always, if you have a problem or issue you want us to check out, send an email to 13investigates at ktnv.com and please include your name and phone number. From Contact 13, most of us would never answer a phone call that showed up as a foreign country on our caller ID. But what if it looked local? Well, there's one viral post going around Facebook saying never answer your phone if it comes from certain area codes. Well, it turns out this warning has a lot of truth to it. The website Consumerist says these innocent looking area codes on your screen belong to foreign countries. So it may be a scammer calling. And if you call the number back, you could be charged $3 or more. We have a full list of area codes to avoid on our website. Just go to KTNV.com. Las Vegas returns to the national sports stage tomorrow when the NFL draft continues. Raider reps will be in front of the Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas sign to announce their fourth through seventh round draft picks on live television. 13 Action News reporter Masa Saidi is out there live right now with more on what this all means. Masa. It's going to be such a huge monumental day for Las Vegas all night. We've seen people gather by this sign. This is where in a few hours the Raiders will uh, for the first time hold a public event since announcing that they're moving to Las Vegas in three years. This is just another milestone for a city that less than a year ago had no major sports teams all because of decades of stigma over sports betting for the Raiders to be standing in front of this sign tomorrow and picking five.
five people for the team is truly astonishing. Today they picked two players. The first player chosen tomorrow will be the 129th pick and certainly he will be celebrated in less than an hour. The parking lot uh, close to here is going to close so everything can get set up. It all starts at 9 tomorrow and it goes until 4 p.m. And of course you at home are welcome to come. Reporting live, Masa Saidi, 13 Action News. Thank you, Masa. We don't know who that player is, but he, we, we hope he makes the team. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be of note. Welcome. Celebrity Chef Gordon Ramsay is turning up the heat in Las Vegas. He's opening the first ever Hell's Kitchen restaurant at Caesars Palace. The restaurant will take the spot currently occupied by the Stripside Cafe in front of Caesars. It'll be Ramsay's fifth Las Vegas concept. A Valley woman says her car runs worse after taking it to a local auto shop. So she feels she was ripped off. I have no idea about that. Why the state tells Contact 13 the shop shouldn't even be open for business. Plus, a couple of crooks give new meaning to, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. We'll show you their struggle to yank an ATM out of a convenience store, and of course, it's all caught on camera. Brian. And Steve, breezy and a little chilly for tonight and tomorrow morning. Really no different except for the evening hours when the winds will calm down. But it won't be the wind we'll be talking about next week. It'll all be about the big heat that's on the way to the valley in your 13 first alert forecast just ahead. He stole everything. This is an attack on the family. When the system's broken, Contact 13 fights for you. I couldn't believe it. To me. Exposing scams before you get ripped off. It was just hassle after hassle. Helping you get results when you're getting the runaround. She only made one phone call. If you feel like you have nowhere else to turn, email 13investigates at ktnv.com. Thank you, Channel 13. We've got your back. Contact 13, only on 13.